Um, the GPU profitability uh, video. And I were actually fast forward like a year anyway, and I, I made this video. Uh, where passive GPU mining is no longer passive income. Uh, updating my so what that basically means is that right now if you want to make money on GPU mining in the bear market, you need to do a few things. The first thing you need to do is your research. There are a lot of proof of work coins out there. We are very fortunate there are a lot of them. You need to figure out which one that you believe in the most for whatever reason that may be. Then you're going to need to start looking at price appreciation, and then you're going to need to figure out yield of your coins or yield of said coins as well, and whether or not you're going to sell or you're going to hold. Because right now, to really be profitable, you have to hold long term, and you're going to need to balance that from any near term selling pressure. So I know the first thing a lot of people do is they go to hashrate.no, which I think is a lot better than what to mine anymore, and they look at the GPU they have. Let's just say you have a 3070. And they look to see what the most profitable thing is. They click on it, and then they figure out how to start mining it, which is fine. It's not a big deal. I mean, you can do that, but that is not how I do it. What I do instead is I like to go to uh, Mining Pool Stats. It's one of my favorite websites. And then I like to look at coins. Like, for example, let's look at Caspa. I like to look at the network hash rate. And as you can see right now, it is it's really really high uh, I know people are mining it and they say that at the current Caspa price it is profitable to mine and it is profitable and it's okay I mean in the last 90 days it's gone up 371 percent even if it is down almost 40 percent in the last 30 days but for me the Caspa hash rate is too high so what I'll look for right for example is I will go to a coin like let's type in radiant should have had it loaded up but sorry so I'll go to radiant right and I will look at the hash rate history and as you can see right now the hash rate is pretty low it's gone down quite a bit like if we look at January it, or December right it was at 81 tera hash it is now at 146 so it's over double it went down from 127 tera hash to 110 tera hash so it went down like Quite a bit, you know, 27 terahashes is, is not nothing to sneeze at. So then I went back on it, and of course the hash rate went up like it always does, but then it went back down again. So what I'm getting at is that I will check hash rates. Like, let's look at the ergo hash rate, for example. Ergo hash rate is actually very low. If you look at it right after the ethberg, it was 95 terahash. Now we're at about 25 terahash on the ergo hash rate. So... Let's use the events that transpired over the last two weeks when I did a video when I did a video on Ironfish saying that it was dead. I went from profitable from eight days ago to dead five days ago. So let's tell let's explain how I figured out that it wasn't worth mining and then what I did after that. So Ironfish, as you guys all know, Ironfish has been unusually hyped as far as a new proof of work coin. Uh, there was a lot of investors backing it, you know, a lot of other things on it. Now, I don't know the full story. I just know that everybody was talking about it and it was really hype. And I was like, okay, well, a lot of people are on the test net. You know, I had no desire to do it, but I got everything set up for like 20 minutes. And then when Ironfish went live, I dumped my whole farm onto it because the theory for me was the Ironfish network, even though it started at like a petahash, it will never, the yield will never be better than it is those first few days. And so far you know the first day it was about 1.5 petahash and then it went up and i think it started yeah about 1.5 and then it just kept going up i think i was making with about 1.4 terahash about 16 iron a day for the first two days so you know it kept going up and up and up and up and up and this is so you know we've got day two it doubled day three it doubled or I went up to three petahash, I'm sorry. Day four, it was at about five petahash. Then day four and a half, it, it, it started to shrink, but by then my yield went from 16, or I think I was it was at 20 iron a day, I'm sorry, the first day. It went from 20 iron a day to six iron a day. And at that point to me, it was not worth it. Um, forget about the fact that the price, the day I got off, and then the price just started tanking. It started at $9. Here, I'll show you the price right here. Actually, if you're going off some other exchanges, the price was like $19. But anyway, it started at about, uh, when it went on Kudu, I think it was at $9. And then now it's half of that. I mean, it's lost 
46% of its value in the last seven days. So for me, the fact that iron kept going down in price, uh, now that's not to mean it will go up, but the fact that it went down in price and then the yield went bad, in my opinion, now we're at about three and a half petahash and we're sticking there. So we're at, a, we're almost, the, almost we've lost almost about half of the iron hash rate. Uh, but, you know, we're still at, I would say I'd probably make about 10 iron a day right now. And frankly, um, with the fact that we don't know what iron could be, you know, in the next few days, months, or even years, because it's such a new coin, and the fact that the yield is so low, it made me not want to mine it, even though, if you look at, uh, if you look at AMD right now, iron is the most profitable coin, I don't really think I want to mine it right now because we, we don't know what's going to happen and the yield doesn't justify it. It's not like you could mine like 20 iron a day at this price. Uh, you're getting, you know, like I said, with a 1.4 peta, uh, with a 1.4 terahash farm, which is like 130 GPUs, I think I'll be getting like uh, maybe 10, 7 to 8 iron a day, which to me just isn't worth it right now. So once I pulled off iron to keep going with the story, I needed to figure out what I wanted to mine next. And I got to thinking, I went and looked at some hash rates and I looked at radiant, right? So I got off at about April 22nd. So the radiant hash rate literally fell off a cliff and a lot of it was because people moved on to iron. Now they're both core algos. Um, right now I really like mining core algos because for a lot of people with 10 cent kilowatt hour or more, it's the mo it's very very efficient and with me living in the northeast in the united states the heat will go up and um you know core algos are just easier to mine when it's hot but another thing i wanted to consider was the fact that you know um i i'm very fortunate to be in a very good uh discord we call it center solace discord uh, with a lot of great uh intelligent crypto miners and one of them being t swift which i'm sure you've heard of from red panda mining suggested that instead of just dual mining which is what i always do because regardless of the hash rate with zill there is literally no reason to mine zill regardless of how it's performing you just get zill you know you mine it for two minutes every hour one or one or two minutes and you just you can either sell it or hold it you know for the the very very little amount of work to put into it it makes no sense just to not mine it so i always dual mine zill but he suggested that why not check out core algos uh, i'm sorry not core algos memory algos and use some more of the gpu now you know for most people that might not make sense because you know your power will go up but it's funny because actually with me my power rate goes down since as you guys know, if you followed my videos before, I have a variable power rate because where I live, I can shop half of my bill as in I can shop the delivery fee and I can get that changed to a fixed rate. So because it's a fixed rate, the more power that I use, which triple mining uses more power, the lower my kilowatt hour rate would actually be. Therefore, the more profitable overall I would be. So, you know, you can mine multiple coins. You can do ETH hash coins. You know, you've got coins like Octospace, which you see right here, um, or you can do non-ETH hash coins. You know, there's there's Conflux and there's Ergo, which are memory heavy coins as well. So the first one I checked out was Conflux because Conflux, as you can see here, has been doing great over the last 90 days. You know, we've got a 456% jump, even though in the last 30 days it's down 18%, it's still up and it's a pretty profitable coin. When you compare it to say let's look at ergo which you know it's down 50 percent year to date uh 66 percent in the last nine days you know it's kind of just um it's kind of just really stagnant especially if you look at the last year to date it hasn't really gone up or gone down much you know besides this little pump it had uh you know in april when everything pumped up so i first checked out conflux because like i said i liked the growth year to date however when I looked at the hash rate of Conflux, if you look at the year, you know, if you look at the last year on the hash rate, it's gone nuclear. So if we look at January, it was at 104 terahash, and we're at 564 terahash, and that's after it took a pretty sharp half hash rate dip from the crazy network high of 13.2 hash. So you know your Conflux yield is a lot lower than it was in January. However, if we look at Ergo's hash rate. And we compare it to the last year to date, 
you know, it's actually gone down. You're actually yielding more ergo now because it was 35 terahash in January and it's now 25 than you were then. So for me, ergo isn't exactly a money losing coin. It's just right now people are not as high on it as they are on Conflux, which made ergo, the, in, in my opinion, the choice for me to triple mine. So with that, my, you know, with the fact that I wanted to do Radiant because of the incredible hash rate decrease and Radiant still has a pretty solid price. Now, you know, it's not quite Caspa uh, as far as the, you know, the perceived market value and the upside. But if you actually look at the price, it's gone up 714% in the last 30 days. I mean, the last 90 days, 30 days, it's gone up 300%. It's actually currently pumping 20% right now. Uh, I have a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of good signals for me with Radiant. The price is good. And the hash rate is way, way, way lower than Casper, which means you're yielding a lot more. So currently, with my whole farm mining Confa, or with my whole farm mining Ergo, Zill, and Radiant, I am profitable. Now, there are a few things I do want to add. Um, I've already talked about my power rate, how it's variable, which means the more power I use, the more, um, the less it actually costs me which is one factor. Another factor is I do have to sell at least half of my power bill every month. Um, I, I just dump all my zill and then whatever's left over, I have to figure out something to sell. So the fact that Radiant is pumping means that I will be able to sell less of the coin, which helps me longer term. Um, so that is another reason. That is another reason that filters into my mindset for mining that. Now, again, there are not, there's no bad coin, right? Like you could just believe in a coin, right? Like say you could believe in Nexa. Now I have a pretty big Nexa bag myself. I've been on Nexa since the beginning. And you could just wanna say you wanna do my Nexa. I mean, if you look at the hash rate from, you know, it's all time high of 23 terahash in April, it's gone down, you know, about four terahash. So it's gone down a little bit and it's still a very profitable coin to mine. As you can see over here in uh, what to mine, especially at 40 series, Nexa is, one of the best for 40 series and you really can't beat it you know or another thing is you could miss the good old days and you could like something like octospace uh, i have a little bit of a bag of octospace i mean the coin's done very good over the course of the last few months um, the hash rate is i mean it's done actually incredible the hash rate in terms of the network is is definitely going all over the place but it's not that bad if you consider, you know, ETH hash in general. It's about 100, um, 1.2 tera hash. So you could be just a big fan of it and you just want to mine it. I mean, the yield isn't bad. Another thing you can check is you can go to hashrate.no and you can check out the stats for the coin. Like I was just talking about Octospace. You can see the network hash rate. You can see the block reward, the block time. And that helps determine yield. For example, there was a new coin that I had just heard about called Kayla coin that kind of interested me because it was early and the hash rate was low until I looked at the block reward which is basically nothing uh, and then the block time so your yield is basically nothing and you're hoping that the ridiculously high price that the coin has right now somewhat holds like you're hoping it trades at $86 a coin now you know that's tokenomics that's neither here nor there but you know a lot of mining meme or a lot of mining altcoins right now is just doing your best to take a guess and hope you don't get burned and a coin that has a value of $86.97 and a uh, a pretty low market cap I don't know I don't really feel too good about that but that's just my opinion that doesn't mean it's wrong uh, you know you might end up putting your whole farm on this and it might be the best thing you ever did. This could end up being, you know, one of the most profitable coins on a mining calculator. It could replace Nexo or Radiant or Iron or anything like that. One last thing to consider. Now, I do not own any older GPUs. You know, I do not recommend mining with older GPUs. and I will be releasing some videos that explain that. But you might have a situation where you have them and they work. For example, let's look at the 1660 Super. Right here, the 1660 Super. Uh, I remember being shocked at how well this thing did on Ironfish when it first came out. 
you know, I saw people with entire 1660 farms, and they were almost as efficient as, say, like a 6700 XT, and they weren't that far off from a 3070 on iron. Let's take, you see what a 1660 does here. You take a look at what it does on iron to compare the two. Um, it's 15 cent profit, and right now, the 1660 is only 5 cents profit. It's only 5 cents profit. But, you know, if you had these things and you didn't sell them and this is all you wanted to mine with and say your power rate was, I don't know, say you've got like a 8 cent power rate, then you're doing, you're making 7 cents a day on these things. You know, maybe Iron Fish is worth it for you to stay on. Maybe you move to Radiant. But the point is, you know, maybe for you it's a little different. Um, you just, you have to do your own research and you've got to pull your own numbers. You know, you have to have your actual power costs. I actually plan on buying an Elmore Labs PMD so I can get actual full power readings on these things. And I think you'll get a lot better reading on these versus on, um, you know, on just using plugs in the wall. And then I can also get the riser power readings, which will help as well. All right, guys. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, I know it was a long one, but I want to do explain... Uh, in my opinion, the different ways you need to figure out what coin is best for you to mine. And I wanted to show you a story that was recent on how I made the decision. And then I wanted to just use some outline cases that, you know, saying just because I do something doesn't mean you have to do something. I just want to give you my mindset and then you can kind of apply it to your situation in a way that works best for you. So thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe. I know your time is valuable. So thank you for spending it with me. Crew man, out.